Hi everyone, I'm Liz and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel for a floss tube episode. Today I am just talking cross stitch and sewing. I have also been knitting a ton, but there's so much knitting to talk about that I kind of felt like I should do a separate video because I have a lot to say about cross stitch and sewing today. And I feel like if I tried to combine, I'd end up with like a two hour episode, <laughs> which might be fun for you guys to watch, but would not be fun for me to film and edit all in one sitting. So I'm gonna break things up today. And I probably put it in the title, but we're gonna do a Brenda Gervais parade today because as you might have seen if you follow me on Instagram, I started the new Brenda Gervais Christmas sampler. And um, I have a lot of other Brenda Gervais pieces that I have stitched, framed, finished, have in progress, etc. And so I thought it would just be fun to, I don't know, talk about Brenda Gervais and my love of all of her charts. Um, I also have some other whips and things to show you. I have a finished sewing project to share with you. I've got giveaway winners to announce. Um, if I'm looking down, it's because I'm trying to look at my notes. Uh, <laughs> so I feel like I've got a lot, a lot to share. It has been three weeks since my last regular floss tube episode. Um, last weekend, mom and I went on a cross stitch retreat uh, in New Braunfels, Texas, hosted by the Golden Needle. I did a whole little video recap of our weekend and posted that I think last Monday. So I'll link that down below in case you missed it. It was mom's very first cross stitch retreat, my very first local retreat and kind of a smaller one. I'd only been to ones that I think were like 150, 200 plus people. So uh, yeah, we had a great time. It was so much fun just to spend the weekend with my mom and sit around and stitch, go get dinner, shop. Um, it was great. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I've been up to for the past few weeks. Um, I'm sure there has. <laughs> a lot of work, uh, our fun stitchy weekend. Oh, I got sick right after Halloween. Um, I just got like a really bad cold. So that knocked me out for a couple of days. But yeah, I don't know, nothing that exciting. Um, my nephew Andy did win his t-ball championship game this morning. Yeah, go Andy. Uh, I went to his playoff game the other night. I was posting about it on Instagram. He is the cutest, fastest, best little t-baller in the world, and they won their championship game today. So yay, go Andy. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna jump right into cross stitch. We're gonna start with cross stitch today because I've got a lot of stuff that I wanna show you. So I'm gonna start with whips. I have three projects that I've worked on. Oh gosh, I just realized I didn't grab one. Off to a great start. One second. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to start with an apology because I did not iron this one and I don't feel like getting myself out of everything that I've surrounded myself with and going to iron this, but that's okay. Um, I started, I think the day before Halloween, I went ahead and restarted again this Just Nan Halloween party chart. And I had showed you guys this one in my last video. I was having a really hard time figuring out what fabric to stitch this on to get the white to show up. And somebody, um, I'll go find your comment. Somebody commented and said, why not just use two strands of white to make it pop out more on the fabric you wanna use? And I was like, genius, genius. Um, <laughs> I like to stitch on 36 count, so I always stitch with one strand because that's just my preference. And um, I was like, yeah, let me just stitch the white with two strands and see what happens. And it worked great. So thank you very much, all of you kind commenters. Um, yeah, so that's what the chart looks like. And here is the start I got on mine. So I did end up stitching this on, let's see, it's Zweigert Lavender, 36 count Zweigert Lavender Linen. And I did use two strands for that white and I think it looks great. Everything else is one strand. Um, this chart is so small and has so many color changes. So I stitched on this for two nights, but that's all the progress I made. Um, yeah, I'm very excited for this one though. And I definitely want to get it finished for next Halloween, but this will probably be put away for the season because I don't really feel like stitching on Halloween right now. I am full on into 
Christmas stitching. Um, so this is, yeah, 36 count, one strand except for the white, all the called for colors. It's a mix of fancy floss and DMC, um, probably about 12 colors. And uh, I, I saw this at the Silver Needle when I was there in Tulsa um, in October. And I ended up getting the chart on 123 Stitch because they were sold out at the Silver Needle. So this is still available, even though it's a little bit of an older chart. So that is Halloween Party. Oh, speaking of Halloween, I just realized I haven't talked to you guys since Halloween. Um, I just thought I'd include a couple pictures. Rob and I, I mean, I dressed up uh, just basically by wearing a skeleton onesie that I found at Old Navy. And he wore a Freddy Krueger Halloween sweater. And we sat out in the front porch and handed out candy. That's our favorite thing to do. And um, our first trick-or-treaters of the night were my sister, her husband, and their kids because they live just down the street. And the kids were so cute. Um, Benny and his little pumpkin in the wagon. Um, was adorable. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else I wanted to say, but I just thought I was like, all right, I hope everybody had a great Halloween. Um, it was very adorable around here. And then we came inside and watched The Haunted Mansion on Disney Plus, And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. I've never seen, I think there's an older movie of Haunted Mansion, right? Is it Eddie Murphy? I don't know. I've never seen the, <laughs> the original one. Um, I also have never been to like Disney World, so I don't really... I don't know. I didn't know anything about Haunted Mansion, I guess. I know it's a ride. But um, yeah, I thought the movie was super fun. So that was our Halloween. <laughs> okay, let me move on to the rest of the whips because now we're gonna start talking about some Christmas whips. Um, I was watching Cross Stitch Kate's most recent video, which if you're not watching Cross Stitch Kate, you should. She does like once a month videos and I feel like she and I stitch a lot of the same things. Um, so it's fun to watch. Um, Anyways, I was just watching her most recent video, I think from last week, and she was talking about her plans and like Christmas stitching plans and just stitching plans in general. And she um, showed this chart and I was like, oh, I have that in progress and I have not worked on it much at all. Um, and I'll tell you the reason in a second, but I really wanted to work on mine. So the chart I'm talking about is Winter Wonderland by Blackbird Designs. Now, this is an out of print chart. I am so sorry about that. This is honestly, that's one of the reasons I don't work on this one much because I feel like every time I show it, um, people sometimes can get a little upset that they can't find the chart. I had no idea it was out of print when I bought it. I just found it on a website, fully kitted. It was like, had a floss pack. It didn't have the fabric. It had a floss pack in the chart. I thought it was adorable. I found this sometime in 2020, I think. Um, yes, because I started this around Christmas 2020. So this whip has been lingering for three years. <laughs> um, and I really just want to finish it. It is a bigger design than you might think based on the chart size and like the cover photo. It's like 150 by 150. So I don't know that it'll get done this year, but I really wanted to pull this one out and work on it. And I think Kate said she was starting hers today. Um, I'm filming this on Saturday. Uh, you're probably watching this on Sunday or Monday. But anyways, Kate, I'm joining you for a little um, pretend stitch along for a while. <laughs> uh, anyways, okay, so here is my progress on Winter Wonderland. Um, I'm trying to think of what I've added since I mean, you would have last seen this probably two or three years ago. I don't even know. Um, I think I started filling in some more of the bottom. Oh, and I definitely started filling in this house that wasn't there. Um, I really just worked on this, I guess, two nights um, this past week after watching Kate's video. So I am stitching mine on a 36 count fabric that I have forgotten the name of. So I'll put it on the screen. And I'm using all the called for floss because I bought the floss as a floss pack, which was really handy. Um, yeah, one strand over two. And I love this one. I think it's gorgeous. I started working um, last night on this little goose down here, um, like a little Christmas, a little Christmas goose right here. <laughs> I just think this one's so cute. So I was really happy to get it back out. Um, and I also love the little quilt squares in the roof, like the sawtooth stars. So anyways, um, hopefully that's one that eventually Blackbird reproduces. Um, every once in a while they go through their back catalog and like 
re-release like older out of print stuff so fingers crossed that this one comes back because I know in the past when I've shown it it's been pretty popular um okay and now we have the last whip that I've worked on on the last few weeks and it was a new start and it was my retreat start so this is a new release from Brenda Gervais <laughs> um and it's called the light of winter so here is what the design looks like hopefully that's in focus there. I'm having to like charge my camera um, while I'm filming. And so I've got like a big charger cord in front of the screen. So I'm really hoping when I watch this back, everything stays in focus because I can't quite see what I'm doing. But that is what the design looks like. This was just released at the end of October. Um, I ordered mine from the Tinsmith's Wife. So this is a little bit of haul. I ordered it fully kitted, well, with the floss and the pattern from Tinsmith's Wife. Um, I feel like she always has the Brenda Gervais releases, like, the day they're released. And so I like to order from her because um, she's super close to me. Quick shipping. She's so sweet. She ships super fast. Um, highly recommend Wendy over at the Tinsmith's Wife if you need a local cross-stitch store to order from. And uh, yeah, so I got this started on last Friday at our retreat. And this is the only thing I worked on Friday, Saturday, Sunday of the retreat. And then I did work on it a couple more nights at home. And I feel like I've made a lot of progress. So here is where mine's at. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. I absolutely love this. I am stitching mine on 40 count fabric. It is called One More Reproduction by Bestitch Me. And I am obsessed with this fabric and I'm definitely gonna go order another fat quarter, um, probably in 36 count. This one's a 40 count. I think I need the 36 count now. Um, oh, I think it's so good. I'm doing all the called for colors, one strand of floss over two linen threads. It's a mix of DMC and Fancy Floss. Um, this is kind of, I think, supposed to be a companion piece to Winter Rose Manor, which I will show you in a minute in the Gervais Parade, because you know I've stitched that one. Um, <laughs> so I had to have this. It's so good. Um, what else can I say about this one? The border. Okay, so, um, I feel like some people might be slightly put off by the border if you're not like a big border stitcher because it is complicated. But I honestly have had so much fun with that border. It just feels like a lot of little tiny motifs and it's like constantly changing. Um, I mean, obviously there's like a pattern to it, but it's so many different flosses and little flowers and leaves and things. And it's very fussy and very delicate and I'm obsessed with it. So I have really been enjoying stitching that border. Um, I love the look of houses and I do like stitching them, but I get bored doing a house like all at once. So I like do a little of the house. I go to a little border. I do a little house. I did that like basket on top of the roof, you know, like I just kind of jump around. So yeah. Um, I will link to Bestitch Me to this fabric in the description box because I feel like it is an awesome color. It's, um, the fabric feels super nice. I stitch in hand. So like the feel of fabric is really important to me. And yeah. Um, anything I talk about in the video that I can link, I try to link in the description box below. Um, so I think on mobile, there's like three little dots and it says more and you can like expand the description box on your computer. It's like a little drop down box. Um, but I try to link everything I talk about to make it easy if you're trying to find something. So yay, that is the light of winter. So <laughs> the Gervais Parade. I thought it would just be so fun to pull out all of my FFOs, finishes and whips um, from Brenda Gervais that I could find. There was, I think one Christmas piece that wasn't in the box I was looking at and I didn't want it to keep digging because I haven't gotten all my Christmas stuff out yet. Um, so I might have one or two more pieces that aren't in this little parade, but I don't know. I just thought it would be fun. Um, Brenda Gervais is like one of my absolute favorite cross-stitch designers. Um, and her and Blackbird Designs, I think those are the two that I've stitched the most of. Her, well, Okay, I actually did this as com at Common Threaded Stitcher. I went and looked. So I think it's Brenda Gervais, Blackbird Designs, Liz Matthews, and Heart and Hand. 
I think those four are what I've stitched the absolute most of, like finished the most of and have the most items in my house. Um, so yeah, I might do these like little, I don't know, walkthrough series every once in a while if it's fun for you guys. Um, so we're starting with Brenda Gervais in honor of my new start. And let me show you that companion piece I was just talking about, Winter Rose Manor. Uh, oh, let's try to get the light off of it. Okay. Here is Winter Rose Manor. Um, I am not going to remember all of my fabric and floss details. Actually, on this one, I do. This one is 40 Count Brenda's Brew by R&R. &R. Um, sorry, I'm trying to hold it so there's not like a big glare from the ring light. I did the framing of this myself. I bought a custom frame for it from Michaels and did the framing. And uh, I'm absolutely obsessed with this. I think I finished and framed this right before last Christmas or was it the year before? I can't remember now. And actually, now that I'm saying this, I'm almost positive this frame did not come from Michaels. I bought this frame from my local framer, um, like just an independent local framer who I really love, but it can be really pricey. Um, so I have only taken a few special pieces to her. Um, and I did buy this frame from her, but I actually did do the mounting myself. I just bought the frame from her custom made. Um, so sorry, this is not a Michaels frame. But yeah, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Sorry about the glare. Um, yeah, okay. First FFO. The next one I want to share with you is the very first sampler I ever stitched. Um, oh goodness, I'm not going to remember the name of this, am I? A lot of people have stitched this. I know Steph from Just Keep Stitching is working on this, or did she finish hers? I can't remember. I know she has a lot of progress on it if she hasn't finished it. Um, this is my very first sampler. And this one's framed without glass, so it's a little easier to show you in the camera. Honestly, I really like the way my finish, my pieces look without glass. And so I might just stop getting glass when I frame. Um, this has been framed without glass for probably four years now. And there's no damage on it. No dust, no visible dust that I can see. I don't know. <laughs> I might just stop using glass. We'll see. Um, anyways, uh, so I'm going to put all the details on the screen here of the pattern fabric. And I know I use the called for floss. I do know I stitched this on a 32 count. I used two strands over two on 32. This was before I was fully into my 36 and 40 count era. And yeah, this is like the first piece that made me fall in love with stitching samplers. So absolutely love this one. I love the unusual colors of it. I think it's so, so cool looking. So that's that one. And then I have one more framed Brenda Gervais piece to show you guys. And this is like up there in terms of like all time favorite framed finishes ever. And this is one that I took to my local framer and had her do. This is probably back in 20. This is before I was floss tubing. Um, this is probably early 2020 when I did this. And it is When Flowers Blossom. Ah, I love it. Oh, and here's the uh, store name. If you're local, it is Hang Ups in Cedar Park. Um, okay, back to the framed finish. It's so good. I absolutely love this piece. I loved stitching it. I was pretty monogamous, I feel like, when I was stitching this because I got so obsessed with it. Um, the pinks, all the shades of pink. I just absolute one of my favorites. Um, this is called Windflowers Blossom. I remember that. I don't remember the fabric, but I'm pretty sure it was a 40 count and I used all the called for floss. And I would stitch this one again. <laughs> like I'm looking at it remembering how much fun I had stitching these like big pink flowers and things. So mm, yeah, love this. Okay, so that was the framed finishes and the others are other types of finishes. Um, this is my wordplay series. I have shown this so many times on this channel because every time I finish one or stitch one, I get shown. But this is a tin from Hobby Lobby that of course is no longer made, but it's just like a little recipe tin. And I finish all of these wordplays the same way with a washer on the back that um, magnets 
right here onto the finish or onto the box and then all the extras are stored in here. I have not done November yet so I've already put up December just to start the uh, Christmas decorating a little early in here. Um, so yes, this is the wordplay series. I do all of these on a 36 count picture this plus fabric. The colors vary. I usually start with her called for colors with what I have on hand and then add in my own just because I don't feel like it absolutely needs to be the called for. So I just do little floss conversions on these usually. But I try to keep it pretty true to her original designs because I absolutely love them. So that's the wordplay series. I will try and link below I think my most recent little finishing video I did of that series where I talk about it in more detail if you haven't seen it if you're new. Um, okay and then I have a couple of pillows and I know I'm missing a couple other Christmassy pillows or Christmassy framed things that I couldn't find off top of my search but that's okay. Um, this one oh one of my faves. It's slightly understuffed, but I actually like the way it looks. It just makes it harder to show it on camera. So I'm gonna do my best here. Um, this is called Basketful of Wintertide. There's a whole series. And I thought I had done another one, but upon scouring my finishes list, I don't think I have. So I really do want to stitch the other seasons of this um, series. But this is the Christmas or winter version. Um, this was stitched on 40 count and I used all the called for floss. And uh, of course I'll put the fabric on the screen because I don't remember it. I finished it as a pillow with some little Christmas fabric and um, the lady dot pom pom switch. And then I filled it with lizard litter. Was it crushed walnut shells? Um, and I really love the kind of bean bag soft feel like this sits up in a bowl and it's real cute. Um, it is probably, it probably could have used a little bit more stuffing, but I actually think it looks very like rustic and cute like this. So I don't mind it. This is, I probably finished this Christmas 2020 as well. This is an older finish. And then I have a little summery pillow finish by Brenda Gervais. This one is called Berry Days at Thistledown Farms. And this um, is part of my summer display. And I just love this. I think it's so cute. Um, I finished this one the same way as a pillow with Lady Dot Rick Rack and this little gold color. Just use some cotton quilting fabric on the back. And this one is actually just stuffed with fiber fill. I don't remember why, if I was out of my lizard litter or not, but um, I stitched this several years ago now. So, yep, absolutely gorgeous. I'm pretty sure this one's a 36 count with one strand, but I'll put the details on the screen for you. Okay, so those are all of the framed finishes and the FFOs. I have one other finish that was in my finishes box, which that finishes box needs to be a whole nother video because I have so much waiting for like a frame or FFOing. Either way, I found this Brenda Gervais piece in the box that I thought I would show you. I think I finished stitching this last year and it is called Mary and Minty. It was a free stitch along on her Facebook page. I'm um, not sure if it's still there, but if you look at Brenda Gervais' Facebook page, it's called Mary and Minty. And um, I'm pretty sure I did this on a 36 count fabric. I know I eliminated, I think there was like this little candy cane stripe border across the top of the design. And I'm pretty sure I just left that off. But otherwise it's as called for with the called for floss. And I feel like the reason I didn't FFO this last year is because I felt like it was a little bit big to be an ornament. And so, and maybe also a little bit big for a pillow, but it maybe wasn't big enough for a, um, a frame. I don't know. I just wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to finish this. So I haven't finished it yet, but it's been stitched. And then I have two works in progress, um, Brenda Gervais charts that I thought I would show you as well. And one of them is a little embarrassing because it is a small design started probably four years ago and I have made like no progress. You probably guys, you guys probably haven't seen this since 2020 or I guess in my whip parades probably. Um, it's called Souvenirs of the Heart Home for Christmas. It's from 2019. It's so cute. She did hers over one on 25 count or 28 count. Over one on 28 count. I was not gonna do that. I do not love stitching over one because I like to use the sewing method when I stitch in hand and I cannot do that over one. It just does not work for me. Um, so uh, I stitched mine on 40 count 
but I really <laughs> have not made much progress and I don't know why. It's on beautiful linen. I know this is a piece of lakeside linen um, with a called for flosses. I think maybe it's because I knew it was going to become, it was going to come out to be kind of an awkward size where it's a little bit big to be an ornament or a pillow. So like, how am I going to finish it? And I need to either stop stitching things a size or figure out a plan because <laughs> um, this is going to be gorgeous. But yeah, I really don't have much done on it, do I? That's it. Um, all the called for floss and I'll put the fabric on the screen. <laughs> Um, and then I just have one more Brenda Gervais whip. And this one I started, I think at the end of August or maybe September. I cannot remember, but this was a new release earlier this year and it is called at home. And you've probably seen this one a lot because, well, I did show it just a few months ago and I know a lot of other, um, floss tubers are working on this and Instagrammers. Um, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And honestly, I had a lot more progress on this than I remembered. I didn't realize how much of this I had gotten done and it's making me want to go back and work on it. So maybe in the spring, maybe. So sometimes I like to do samplerary in January and February and like really focus on my sampler whips. Um, so I'm going to think about that. Um, I like to do like planning videos and whip videos at the end of the year because one, I have time off from work. So I have more time available to film and think about cross stitch and crafting and planning. Um, so I'm going to think about that. And maybe in my planning video, I'll talk about samplerary because I actually really would like to work on this one. I also have some other samplers that are closer to a finish that might get bumped up. Either way, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous design. This is another one that the second it was released, I had ordered it from Wendy at Tinsmith's Wife and started it immediately. Um, I am doing this on 36 count vintage country mocha, which I do believe was the called for, um, fabric. And I'm using one strand of all the called for floss colors and it's so beautiful. And the big red flower on the top and on the right, um, or the left, I don't know which direction. Um, that is like the center point of both sides. So I really do have like 25% of this done, which is amazing. And it's more than I realized that I had done. So yeah, that is At Home by Brenda Gervais. I thought about going through my chart collection and pulling out some of her other charts that I have that I really want to start, but I have a feeling this video is getting long already. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to keep going with Light of Winter. I honestly feel like with the amount of knitting and sewing I've also been doing, I've kind of turned into a monogamous stitcher where when I pick something up, that's like all I want to work on for a while. And I am going to keep working on Light of Winter, I think, all through this Christmas season. Don't hold me to that if it changes, but like that's what's in my head right now. I'm keeping that one out next to my stitchy spot in the living room. And I think that's mostly what I'm going to work on this Christmas season because it's gorgeous and fun and I'm enjoying it. So yeah, that is all the cross stitch. Well, no, <laughs> that's not all the cross stitch. I have some haul and happy mail to show you and then we'll move into sewing uh, and then we'll do some giveaways. So stay tuned for that if you entered in the last video. Okay, I got a couple pieces of happy mail. One, um, I lent a chart to a friend. Um, this is from Friend Stitch. And unfortunately, Friend Stitch, if you like the charts are only available at the friend stitch event. They're never released later or so far they haven't ever been. Um, and so I uh, lent this to somebody who stitched it and returned it. And so I have got all of my floss and everything kitted back up with it so I can start it. Um, I had thought about starting it this winter and I might. I know I just talked about how much I want to stitch Light of Winter and I do, but this is so cute. It's kind of like a big tiny town piece. Um, so it's not huge. It's not tiny, but it's not like a big, huge piece. So and I have everything kitted right here. So I might get this started this year. Um, so thank you, Vicki. That made it home safely. Um, and then the Fat Quarter Shop sent me a couple of their new cross stitch releases. And they sent me Fall Harvest, which I think was originally part of their um, Stitch Quarterly. Super cute. Um, just like a little whatever, like fall picnic basket. 
And then they sent me their stackables for October. And this is super cute. I love the cider and that little um, scarecrow. So I will have both of these linked in the description box below. And a big thank you to Fat Quarter Shop for sending me these. Um, haul. So I showed you the Light of Winter, that stuff that I got. And I am pretty sure the only other haul I have is what I got at the Golden Needle when we were on retreat. Um, no, wait, one other thing. <laughs> <laughs> of course it couldn't just be the fabric. Um, I actually think I meant to show you guys this in my previous video and forgot because I did order this a while ago, but it is, I got this from 123stitch. This is the new Telen Emblem Scissor Sampler 2. So if you've been watching for a while, um, you might know that I stitched the original scissor sampler a couple of years ago. It was a market release, I think in 2021 or was it 2022? It doesn't matter. It was a market release. I was obsessed, bought it, started it, did not stop stitching it until it was done. I think it took me like two weeks. I was obsessed. Um, and I do have it framed now. If I, I think I have a picture, I'll put it um, up here on the screen. And so she released a second scissor sampler and I had to have it because again, it's so cute. So I got that one and then I got some stuff at the Golden Needle. And actually I'm saying stuff, but it's just fabric. Um, <laughs> I really need to stop buying charts because I have been buying like every single chart I see lately. Um, I probably also need to stop buying fabric, whatever. I love shopping for fabric in person because I just don't get to do it that often. So I got three pieces of fabric from her store. And one of them is a brand new to me color that I had not heard of before. And it is Dames of the Needle Wet Flax. And it's a 40 count. And oh, it's gorgeous. It's like a really deep brown neutral like you know I feel like white would pop so well on this so I got that fat quarter and then let me get these others out of the bag so you can see them okay this one is a 36 count fox and rabbit um called Eureka and it is a really pretty light kind of golden neutral and I'll hold up all the fabrics together in a second because I find that like easier to look at and compare the colors against each other. And then the other piece of fabric, I think this one's just a fat eighth of Wheat by Fiber on a Whim. So here is Wheat by Fiber on a Whim. And then Eureka by Fox and Rabbit. And Wet Flax by Dames of the Needle. So there's a little color comparison of the fabric I brought home. Um, yeah. And thanks again, Lisa, uh, owner of Golden Needle for such an excellent retreat. We had such a good time and I've already got myself on the wait list or to be signed up for next year. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, if anyone is local or was interested in that retreat, um, I would say get on Lisa's email newsletter, um, go to her website. And I think there's like a, an email newsletter sign up and she'll send out, you know, announcements about like when signups are happening and all that stuff. So yeah. Okay. I did have one more piece of haul that I forgot that I was going to talk to you guys about. I shared about this in my retreat vlog. Um, and no, it is not a, um, cordless phone from the nineties. <laughs> I made that joke to my mom in that video and it really made me laugh because doesn't this look like some weird piece of tech um, or cordless phone? Um, this is my new retreat light. I had always just had this really cheap, like under $10 one from Amazon that was fine, but like it didn't really fold up nice and flat. It turned on too easily. So it would like turn on in my luggage and then the battery would drain and the battery didn't last that long to begin with. Um, and so actually when I was in Phoenix at the attic, um, they had these lights and I didn't really have room to bring one home with me, but, um, I found this one. I, you know, it's a daylight brand, so you can get it many places. Um, and I'm obsessed with it. It holds a battery charge really well. Like I feel like it lasted me all day long, uh, at retreat. And yes, I was taking breaks and turning it off at certain points, but like, I had no worries about this thing running out of battery. Um, it's a really like heavy weighted base. So it sits on the table really nicely. And then it's like an adjustable, you know, um, brightness and you can kind of like position it where you want it. Um, I don't think you can see it if I sit it down. Yeah. And so like I'm sitting here at my desk and like I have it sitting right on the edge, just like 
you know, pointing down. And so I would just like sit here and stitch and like, it never felt like in my way. Um, oh, I also really like, mm, is there a way to show you? It has like a battery indicator. So you see like the one light right here. Um, so that tells me it's like low battery because it has like four little lights. So if all four lit up, it's fully charged. Um, and then it like counts down for you. Um, yeah. Anyways, I have kind of thought about, you know what I think we really need in the cross stitch world? in the craft world in general is like crafty gift guides that we can all send our partners. Um, my husband has zero clue about craft supplies and I feel like <laughs> selfishly, I just want to make a list of crafty gifts um, that you can just like email to your husband and be like, I would like <laughs> a new light. I would like a gift certificate to one through three stitch. I would like um, the new Brenda Gervais chart. <laughs> um, Maybe in my next video, I'll do some sort of gift guide thing. I don't know. But this would be highly or high up on the list. So anyways, I just wanted to share that because that also was some haul that I got um, a couple weeks ago before we went on our retreat. Uh, now let's talk about sewing. Also, can I talk about my hair? Because um, I tried something new today. I tried a middle part and I have had my hair parted over my left eyeball since I was probably 16 years old, which was how long ago? 24 years ago now. Um, so I'm trying a center part <laughs> and I keep fussing with my hair because I have so much extra hair over on the side that I'm not used to. Um, but I think it looks pretty cute, right? I'm trying to be like a, a youngin. I feel like all the young kids do the center part and curl it, so. <laughs> just me trying to hang on to my youth and also I really do need to get my hair recolored. I was in a meeting room at work uh last week and all of our meeting rooms are like what do you call them AVCN like audio visual you know like basically there's always a webcam on you <laughs> because then you can see the person in the other room when they're in California or wherever and I was sitting there like this and the camera was kind of pointed down and I could just like see my roots and like all the grays and I was like oh okay thank you work and now I need to um go schedule a hair appointment um that's a lot of talk about my hair okay sewing sewing I have done some sewing <laughs> Only one project, but it was a pretty big project. Um, I made my mom a retreat bag. So if you've watched the retreat recap, you've seen it, but I also wanted to share about it here. I don't have it anymore, my mom does. So I'm gonna put some pictures up here of the bag. It is a pattern by Knot and Thread, who I have followed on Instagram forever. She is a long arm quilter and now does a lot of bag patterns and things. And um, her patterns are great. They're really easy to read, really easy to follow. This pattern I feel like is so ingenious and I loved it because of how it's constructed. It's just a few pieces. It's really, really simple. And you'll notice on the binding on the edges, it's on the outside of the bag. If you've ever made like a by Annie bag or another kind of complicated big bag, you know that you usually do that binding on the inside. Um, but I absolutely love how they use that binding instead on the outside as like a decorative piping. Um, and it's super easy to do. You just put the bag together backwards, basically. Um, so I made, technically I, well, let's see, it's three sizes. There's three sizes in the pattern. So I made a size between the smallest and the medium bag. Um, I, it, for no real reason, other than when I like quilted my fabric and was cutting out the pieces, I realized I had room to cut out a slightly larger, larger bag. And I think I could have done the full medium bag, but I didn't want it to be too oversized. I want it to be like a really good carrying size over the shoulder and not like too huge and bulky. So, um, I think if you have the pattern or it might even be on the pattern, but there's like a 14 and a half, 16 and a half, and an 18 and a half inch size. So technically I think mine is 15 and a half. So it's like right between the small and the medium. Um, yeah, and I just really enjoyed it. I had plans and I bought fabric to make myself one, but um, that did not happen. I decided on, I think it was Sunday night that I wanted to make mom a retreat bag for our retreat as a gift. And uh, we were leaving Friday morning. So I really gave myself like, four-ish days to get it done. And uh, I did, but I did not get myself, I did not get mine made. <laughs> uh, so I still have that on like my to-do list. I really, really want one. It's a great bag. It holds project bags and retreat stuff just perfectly. Um, 
I think it would be great for like local retreats where you have space to like bring a bag like that. I don't know if it'd be something I would pack for retreats where I have to fly just because it's a big bag and I only get so much luggage space on the plane. But I think for like local stuff and even just like a grocery carrying bag or like a shopping bag, um, I think it's a great pattern. So I'm really happy I made it. And uh, let me show you the fabric I got to make mine. Um, so that week that I decided to make mom's, I also realized, you know, I wanted to make mine and it takes one yard cuts of fabric to quilt together and then cut apart. And I don't have a ton of one yard or bigger cuts at home. Um, I had the perfect fabrics for mom's, but I wanted to look for some for me. So I went over to Austin Sewing, which is in Round Rock, Texas near me. And, um... I honestly don't even know for sure which ones will be used to be made. Okay, I know this one isn't for the bag, so I'll show you this one first. This is Halloween, which I even bought this after Halloween, but it was just too cute to pass up. It's little black cats and yarn balls, and it's like vaguely Halloween, also vaguely knitting, and I definitely want a cross-stitch project bag out of it, or possibly a Halloween knitting bag out of it. Um, so this probably won't get done anytime soon, but I had to add this fabric to my stash. Um, let's see, can I tell you what the fabric is? Is it on the selvage? It's a Dear Stella um, by Faye Guanipa? Guanipa? I'm not sure how you say. I think it's Guanipa. Um, there is the selvage edge. But anyways, loved it. And then the bag options. I'm not entirely sure, but I think this is what I want on the outside of my bag. It is by Kathy Holden for Moda, and it is like a needlepoint print printed on fabric, or like an antique needlepoint that she has screen printed onto fabric. And I just think it's so vibrant and pretty and cool, and I love that it's like, you know, needlework, basically, even though it's needlepoint and not cross-stitch. But... Absolutely gorgeous. So I got that. And then I got this thinking I would use it as the lining. There, It's like kind of so loud and clashy that it almost works, but I don't know if it's like too crazy. Um, so this is the Lori Holt print. Uh, just a cute little, you know, square um, quilt pattern kind of design. And so this is what I got to be the lining and accent. And we'll see if I actually do it. <laughs> I don't know, I think it could be cool, right? I love pink and red, so um, I'm not too concerned about that. But I also did get a few random low volume colorful backgrounds. So I got this lovely little background print. Um, I got this one, it's a little bit bigger of a dot with, it's like more subtle colors and it's got some sparkle in it. And then I got this gorgeous little background print with little rainbows and things all over it. A little, I mean, not rainbows, like rainbow colors. What am I trying to say? They're like little asterisks, but they're out of super colorful colors. It's just super cute. Um, this one is also a Moda Zen Chic. This one is a Zen Chic Moda. I think this one's a Ruby Star. Yes, this one is a Ruby Star print. And this one, does it say? It doesn't say the selvage edge is cut off, but super pretty. So that's my little bit of fabric haul. Um, I also have a little bit of happy mail from the Fat Quarter Shop for sewing, and I am very excited about one of the things they sent. Um, I mean, both are great. They sent me, uh, oh, I just realized I forgot <laughs> something from the cross stitch section. They also sent me the new chicken club. I had that mixed in with the quilting stuff. These are always so cute. And also vaguely quilty because Lori like stitches her fabric designs into the chickens. So cute. Um, okay, but the quilt stuff. They sent me a new quilt pattern from It's So Emma called Alpine Blooms. And it's gorgeous. It looks very like spring in this colorway. I uh, hope that's focusing. So pretty. And then they also sent me their new book, which is epic. It is um, called Celebrate with Quilts by Lisa Alexander and Susan Aki. Um, two quilt designers that I absolutely love and follow on Instagram. Um, and this is such a nice book. Um, I love getting these. I love looking through these. I've already been flipping through this. There's so many quilts in here I want to make. I'll show you my favorite in just a second. 
So this is a brand new release. Uh, you can get this at Fat Quarter Shop and I think pretty much anywhere you buy books. This is available widely. I will link it, of course, down below. Um, let me show you my favorite. Um, the book is set up as kind of individual blocks. Like it gives you a lot of different cool blocks and then shows you a bunch of different quilts to use those blocks in. So to me, it's like very similar to like, I think Lori Holt's Scrappiness is Happiness type book where it shows you a ton of different blocks and then a bunch of different quilts that you can put them in. Um, so my favorite, let me try and show it to you without showing any instructions, is this one. Uh, what's it called? Me a more quilt. Ah, oh, it's so good. So cute. I love a Valentine's heart quilt. Um, I have one hanging in my house right now, even though it is not anywhere near Valentine's Day. It just hangs up year round. Um, so, I mean, even the cover quilt. So this is like a sampler of all the blocks on the cover. Um, and they show different versions. They show like a Christmas sampler and a Halloween sampler, like just using the fabrics to do the blocks in like a different way. Um, some of the blocks are definitely more advanced. I would not call this like a beginner quilting book. Uh, but if you're a little more like intermediate and are not, you know, super bothered by like small piecing and a lot of triangles and things, um, I think this is an excellent book. So thank you so much to the Fat Quarter Shop for sending me this. I love it. Okay, and I think we've finally gotten to the giveaway. Um, I think that's all all the stuff I have to show you. So let's do the giveaway. I had two patterns, the Quilted Witch in cross stitch and in quilt form to send to you. And um, I had a ton of entries uh, for this giveaway. Thank Oh, also, okay. I'm just like distracting myself. Uh, a couple days after I published my video, um, a spammer, a scammer got into my comments and started telling every single person that they had won the giveaway regardless if they had entered the giveaway or not. And um, I hate that for so many reasons. One, because some people saw that comment. It, it wasn't me. It was a scammer who would use my photo and my name, a very similar name. And I hate it because it makes people very excited thinking they've won the giveaway. Well, I don't pull the giveaway winners until literally when I sit down to film these, um, the, the, the follow up video. I don't go comment on people's comments unless I really haven't heard from somebody for weeks because I don't want people to expect that because that's what scammers do. They go comment, they try to get you to respond to them, they try to get information out of you so they can, I don't know, steal your identity or get you to pay them money. Um, so I'm so, so sorry that happened. As soon as I saw it, I, you know, reported a block, deleted all their comments, but I did have a lot of people reach out to me thinking they had won and I, oh, I hate, hate having to tell them that they didn't um, because I only have, one copy of this and I can't just anyways. Oh, it's so frustrating. So I'm so sorry that happened. There's nothing I can really do to prevent it other than um, I don't tr I don't put giveaway anywhere in the written description of my video. And I ask that you don't use the word giveaway in the comments and no one really does. I don't know how they find I don't know how they find the time and the energy to try to scam my audience, but they do it to everyone. It's not just me. It's just so annoying. So I'm really sorry that happened. Just know that if someone comments on your comment and is trying to tell you they want a giveaway, it's not me. If you have questions about it, don't respond to them. Just email me directly, Elizabeth Ann can stitch at Gmail. It's always in the description box of my videos. If you ever have a question about, you know, some weird comment you received, just email me and I'll, you know, let you know what's up because yeah. Um, Okay, PSA over. Let's do the giveaway. Okay, so the first thing we had was the cross stitch chart, and that was number one was the keyword. And so the winner of the Quilted Witch cross stitch is Dana Coolman. So Dana, you are the winner. My email address is in the description box below. Please email me. Um, I'll get your information and I'll get this chart sent out to you. And then we had number two, which was the Quilted Witch fabric, um, Quilted Witch quilt pattern. Why did I just lose all of my words? Um, so this big old giant book quilt pattern. And the winner for that is Maureen Abramson. So yay, congrats, Maureen. Um, please contact me at the email address below and I will get this out to you. Um, I also, <laughs> uh, this is very spontaneous because uh, just a couple days ago, I hit 25,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is absolutely wild. Um, it's crazy. Uh, so 
thank you all who have ever stopped by and enjoyed one of these videos and hit that subscribe button um, and come back and watch more. Thank you. It's so exciting. It's so fun. I honestly can't believe it sometimes um, that this many people want to watch me talk about my crafting, but I am so happy you do because I love doing it. So I am going to give away some $25 Etsy gift cards in honor of 25,000 subscribers here on YouTube. So the way the giveaway works, you need to be a subscriber to my channel and you need to like the video and you need to leave a comment. And we're just going to use the keyword Etsy. Um, so if you want to use the word Etsy anywhere in your comment, this giveaway will be open anywhere internationally. As long as there's a way for me to get you an Etsy gift card, I will get you an Etsy gift card. Um, so I'm actually gonna do 10 Etsy gift cards. So there will be 10 winners picked. And I feel like I normally get on giveaways maybe around 500 comments. So I feel like, what's what percentage is 10 out of that? It was like a 5% chance? I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so <laughs> anyways, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who has supported my channel, my videos, left me a nice comment. Um, yeah, it really means a lot to me. So let's do some Etsy gift cards. Um, hopefully I will be back in two weeks with another floss tube episode. And that is where I will announce the winners. So you will have to come back to the next episode to find out if you've won. And then hopefully you'll have it in time to order something fun for Christmas for yourself or others. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, I think that's where I'm gonna leave the video today. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I um, will hopefully have a knitting video up in the next week or so to share the insane amount of knitting progress I've made. Um, spoiler alert, I did finish that stripe pipe sweater I was showing you in my last video and I have been wearing it and loving it and obsessed and I've cast on some new things. <laughs> so yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.